Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Emmett McCann, partner at High Star Capital. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Emmett McCann. I'm a partner at High Star Capital and a member of the Board of Directors of Ports America Chesapeake. It's my great honor to be here today on behalf of both of these organizations to welcome all of you to the official opening of Berth 4 at the Seeger Marine Terminal. We've got a full schedule of exciting speakers today, beginning with our friend, the Mayor of Baltimore. At the end of our ceremonies, High Star's founder and managing partner, Chris Lee, will adjourn the crowd, and you're all invited to join us for a luncheon at Bow Brooks, which is a 10-minute drive from here. It's at 2780 Lighthouse Point here in, in Baltimore. Uh, for those who need transportation, we're going to have shuttles departing from the large parking lot across the street at the entrance. With that, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, who's been an amazing friend of the port and labor during her tenure as the mayor of Baltimore. She's worked effortlessly, effortlessly to promote all the great things that this port brings to ba Baltimore, most importantly, jobs. Most recently, she's been instrumental in ensuring the successful relocation of CSX's intermodal facility to Mount Clair. This project will be critical to ensuring that the port remains competitive on the East Coast and that these cranes are fully utilized. It's our honor here to have her here today, ladies and gentlemen, Mayor, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. Good morning, everyone. I am so excited to be here, and I don't know, you know who's going to claim responsibility, Governor, for the weather but I, I don't know. Should I give it to you? I'll give it, I'll give it to you, but Lord knows I was sick. I said I felt like I went to bed in Baltimore and woke up in Seattle. I'm like, thank God we're back in Baltimore. This is a great day for Baltimore and a great day for the state of Maryland. I'm so proud to be here with all of you, particularly my partners in government and particularly with Governor O'Malley, who has overseen tremendous growth in our port during his tenure. You made the port of Baltimore a priority, not just in words, but in deeds. So thank you very much. <laughs> to Chris Lee, thank you very much for investing in our community. It was good to read about your commitment to the public-private partnership in this uh, weekend's uh, Baltimore Sun. I always like a little tiny bit of good news in the sun every once in a while. I think it's <laughs> every third edition. So if you drive around Baltimore, it's not hard to find examples and symbols of the past strength of our port. The port contributes to the growth of this city and to our entire region. These giant cranes are the physical representation of the future of the Port of Baltimore. Very soon, they will, they will help to move cargo on and off the enormous ships that are now able to travel through the Panama Canal. Once again, this pillar of growth for Baltimore, which already supports more than 40,000 jobs in the region, will support new economic activity and create more good paying jobs. Our vision for growing Baltimore by 10,000 families within the next decade depends on our ability to continue to create new economic opportunity by investing in our pillars of growth. Over the last three years, we have shifted the strategy to do more to support our city's major employment sectors, including our port. And earlier last year, the Port of Baltimore faced uh, unnecessary uncertainty. The state was upgrading the port. Uh, and at the city uh, level, we started a $44 million project to rebuild uh, Broning Highway to support additional freight traffic. And you know, Governor, I, I told you when I was out there, when we were making the announcement about uh, the Broning Highway investment, just to get to the announcement felt like I was on a, a uh, roller coaster ride because the roads were so bad. I said, this is needed. We cannot think that we can uh, sustain this level of investment at the port without the city stepping in and doing its part with the, with the road infrastructure, infrastructure, so we're there. So that being said, a related uh, regional project that would allow the double stack trains to bypass the Howard Street Tunnel, uh, the CSX intermodal facility, was in serious jeopardy and the suburban jurisdiction selected for the study um, didn't want it. And, the, and construction stalled for this very vital uh, transportation link. The Washington Post even warned on the front page that without this facility, Baltimore could suffer a devastating blow to one of the few vibrant engines that will keep its economy afloat. I certainly was not uh, about to let that happen. And I told CSX to bring the $90 million project here 
to Baltimore City, the birthplace of the American railroads, and they agreed. Go, uh, again, Governor O'Malley prioritized $30 million to support construction, which is scheduled to be finished by May 2015 in time for the opening, uh, the reopening of the Panama uh, Canal or the opening of the Panama Canal expansion. Our collective action will reward the future by protecting what we have built, by valuing the history of our city with an eye on the future. Uh, you know, the, the port's uh, economic future will be protected for generations by the investments that we're making here today. So thank you again for your commitment, thank you for your investment, and thank you for believing in a better future for Baltimore City. And now, it is my honor to reintroduce Mr. Christopher Lee. Thank you very much. In addition to the mayor, I want to thank all my many friends and guests at this great port of Baltimore so much. Governor O'Malley, Mayor Rawlings-Blake, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's very good with, to be here with all of you on such a special occasion and a beautiful morning in Baltimore. I edited that out last night, and I was very pleased to put that back in. Now, in the infrastructure business, it can take a long time for one, one good idea to become a solid reality. A game-changing project like this is always exciting to think about in the very early stages. But seeing it through takes more than ambition and enthusiasm. It takes a lot of determination and a sense of common purpose. That's how this project made it all the way. As the mayor said, one day soon, when the biggest cargo ships in the world appear off the east coast of this United States, they will be navigating to this port, and we are ready. These incredibly beautiful 400-foot-high cranes behind me today have been hailed as, as the first public-private partnership this harbor has seen. But I'm not so sure about that. 200 years ago, the merchants of Baltimore couldn't wait on the federal government to defend this city. And they raised the funds themselves to build Fort McHenry. Governor O'Malley's smiling because he told me about this. I didn't learn all my history at Johns Hopkins. I've learned a lot from him. They didn't give their commitment a big sounding name, like a public-private partnership, or even a P3, but they sure did the trick against the British on the night of September 13th, 14th, 1814. The one detail worth remarking about that incredible achievement today is this. The Battle of Baltimore back in 1814 was decisive because the city of Washington had already fallen. The British burned the White House, and I've seen for myself the burn marks on one of the stone archways. All of Washington cleared out, and it fell to Baltimore to turn things around. Once again, the city of Washington is retreating. Important things just don't get done, even when the stakes are very high. Partisan gridlock, sequestration, vital endeavors abandoned, and on and on. But today, in this great city of Baltimore, it is a very different story. Much as Maryland did in 1814, we are all working in partnership here. We are getting the job done. We're not fending off the British this time, but we are fending off Norfolk, and once again, Baltimore is winning. Now, that said, I do keep hearing that Governor O'Malley just might be planning his own advance on Washington, D.C. in 2016, and I wouldn't bet against his making it all the way. Once again, Baltimore will win. When we stood here in the spring of 2010, the governor and I came together to formalize yet another critically important undertaking in the Port of Baltimore. And today, I'm really pleased that we're once again here at Seagirt to celebrate the great success. I, I recall when the governor and I had a photo op and we walked along and they were taking pictures of, of, of us. They're taking pictures of him. I just happened to be there. And he said, do you really have the money? <laughs> I had the money, governor. We got it done. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, in 2010, nobody had any money. So, uh, anyway. Now, this success occurred because this governor didn't just talk about it. He did it. He didn't just wail and moan and lament the lack of public money. He mobilized the private sector to partner with the government to provide the investment dollars to open this great port to more ships, more economic development, and most importantly, more jobs. It was a win for workers, a win for investors, 
and a win for the taxpayers and citizens of Maryland. And the reward is the creation of 5,700 jobs and the continued leadership of the Port of Baltimore. Maryland's congressional team came together in the same spirit. While every member of the Maryland delegation has this port close to their heart, let me cite just a few of the key players from both sides of the aisle. Senators Mikulski and Cardin, Representatives Hoyer, Cummings, Ruppersberger, and Harris. All of them well understand what this port is worth to the public interest. Senator Mikulski especially wanted to be with us here today. And I very wish, much wish the timing had made it possible because she has always been here for the Port of Baltimore. Whether it's been port security, dredging, strengthening the S-curve in the Tolchester Channel, or supporting the Coast Guard sector in Baltimore, Senator Mikulski and her colleagues have always made it happen. I'd like a big hand for the Maryland delegation and Senator Mikulski. And they have the best of allies in our great mayor, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, who's been a con consistent advocate for the Seagirt Terminal and the entire port. In addition, all that she has done to revitalize Baltimore since assuming office in 2010. Through the efforts of these outstanding office holders, this great port of ours will remain a source of jobs, revenue, economic development, and state pride far into the future. I believe we have set a standard here today for how to meet big challenges in seaports and in other kinds of infrastructure. We've created not hundreds, but thousands of new jobs. In this partnership, we have gathered together all the forces that make great things happen. Enterprise, competition, superb engineering, and state-of-the-art technology. It shows that we can build the best, and we are the best, without ever expanding government and higher taxes. As anyone knows who has spent much time at the Port of Baltimore, efficient outcomes are the norms around here. There is a simple reason for this. Workers here, and by the way, let's have a big hand for these members of the ILA. They are the true heroes of this port. They are the ones who get things done. I thank you all so much for all that you do for us. The result is very impressive, and we're grateful to all the men and the women of the ILA, not just the ones who are up here with me that I have the honor to be with, but, but all of them. And they've made this the most competitive port in the United States. Baltimore averages 37 lifts per hour. We smoke every other port in America. I'm very happy to have with us today Horace Alstom, the Vice President of the ILA. I'm wearing an ILA pin. I was inducted into the ILA today, so I'm, I'm going to get rid of this suit and I'm going to get one of eight. <laughs> so many other thank yous are owed at a moment like this, but I'll cite just a few, starting with the woman whose name is on this port, Helen Bentley. When critics went after this project, Helen's credibility and conviction overcame them. Helen saved me at the Board of Public Works when a certain individual who remained nameless was viciously attacking me, and Helen told him to shut up and do what was right for the port. <laughs> God bless you, Helen. And thank you so much for standing by me and Governor O'Malley and Mayor Rawlings-Blake and our mutual vision for Seagirt. An exceptional public servant, um, is John Picari. John served in the cabinets. John, you're here. John threw over the new Secretary of Transportation to come back with his friends in Baltimore. It was his new boss's first day on the job, and here he is. So. Tremendous that you made it. John served in the cabinets of two governors of Maryland. His leadership turned BWI from a third, point, third choice airport for the region into the tremendous asset it has become. We're, we're very glad he was here when this project got off the ground. And before he was called into service for his, our country as Deputy Secretary of Transportation. We all need him in DC now, and he's doing important things nationally, just as he did for our state. John, thanks for all you've done for Maryland and all you're doing for America. <laughs> Beverly Swaim Staley was John's worthy successor. She's been involved with Seagirt since the terminal was first opened in 1990. Years later, she helped guide this project as Secretary of Transportation. She's now heading the Union Station Redevelopment Corporation in DC. 
Martin, why do you why do you let all your key guys go to DC? You know, you <laughs> Beverly is simply indispensable wherever she goes, and we're very grateful for her good judgment and leadership. <laughs> Jim White. Jim is a big and greatly admired name around these docks. His sharp instincts and foresight made Baltimore the leading automotive port on the East Coast. Others in his place might have supported a P3 at Seagirt just to raise the cash. But Jim's a much bigger thinker than that. He stayed focused on the goal of getting ready for the post-Panamax megaships. The result of Jim White's relentlessly focused vision, and relentless is a very good word to use for Jim, like that of Governor O'Malley, is more jobs, revenue, and economic development in the Port of Baltimore. Jim is also one of the most skillful negotiators I've ever dealt with, and I've dealt with a lot of negotiators. My main negotiator in this deal was, was Emmett McCann, who, who introduced us. And he's known to many of you. And let's just say, Emmett had a full head of hair before he spent all that time bargaining with Jim. <laughs> Governor, trust me, Jim got a great deal for the people of Maryland. In my book, he is the MVP of this achievement we mark today. And I thank Jim from the bottom of my heart, both as a Marylander and as a partner, for all he's done. <laughs> P3s don't go far unless there's someone to keep all the P's together. It takes some serious diplomatic skills, and the Henry Kissinger in this deal was Leif Dormjo of MemDOT. Leif did a lot of shuttling among Maryland Port Administration, MDOT, the General Assembly, and our High Star team at Ports America. He kept us all going on the same smooth, straight track, even on the several occasions when a derailment seemed inevitable. He's another star of the story, and I know he has everyone's gratitude. Thank you, Leif. I also want to thank a very important force for the improvement of the Port of Baltimore for the last several decades. Richie Hughes has been front and center in supporting the competitiveness of this region and in making sure this port remains a creator of jobs for the people of Baltimore. As president of the ILA, he worked with us to make this berth and these cranes a reality, and it really could not have happened without him. Richie, you have all of our sincerest thanks. I want to give personal thanks to Matt Gallagher, one of the chief architects of this P3. Whether it's perfecting performance management tools like StateStat or creating the first of its kind public-private partnerships, it takes innovators like Matt Gallagher to make good things happen. Matt will soon leave his job as the governor's chief of staff and we are grateful for his contribution. Important as labor and our incredibly dedicated electic, elected and civil officials are to the success of the Port of Baltimore, the mainstay of our port are the ships that call on us and the extraordinary partnerships we have with the great liner companies that make Seagirt and Dundalk their home. Our customers include Evergreen, Hapa Lloyd, MSC, and many others who keep the Port of Baltimore thriving and through their business affirm what we have worked to achieve here today. I want to acknowledge Guillermo Gonzalez of CSAV, as, as well as Mar Mauro Dalbo and Marco de Casagrande of MSC, and also my good and longstanding friend, Captain Quo from Evergreen. I know that the very first container you went by today was an evergreen container. And while I want to keep all my liner companies equally happy, I owe a special debt to Captain Quo. So a big thank to all of you. One very last thank to you is personal, or at least as personal as gratitude to your hometown can be. I live here, my sons go to school here, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Both my boys are in high school here in Baltimore, and come this fall, my eldest, who's here with us today, will follow my steps and be on his way to Johns Hopkins. I hope that fine school does for him what it did for me, because I credit JHU for a lot of good things that have happened since the day I arrived there as a freshman. Currently, I'm very privileged to serve as a Johns Hopkins University trustee. That means I get to work with Hopkins president, Ron Daniels, who's done so much to unify Hopkins with Baltimore, all the way from Charles Village to East Baltimore, Ron, thanks for honoring us at Seagirt by being here today, and thanks for all you do for Baltimore and Hopkins. Now, Johns Hopkins himself was a guy like Martin O'Malley, Jim White, maybe even me. He wasn't going to let anyone mess with the Port of Baltimore. When New York built the Erie Canal in 1825, which threatened to put Baltimore out of business, 
Johns Hopkins and his partners responded by founding the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, America's first railroad, which is now the CSX. By the way, the National Gateway Partnership between the CSX and Maryland, which the mayor mentioned, spearheaded by our governor, is going to build on the success of Seagirt and create even more jobs and even more economic success by bringing double stack rail service to Baltimore. That is a very big deal. Now, not only was Johns Hopkins a visionary for Baltimore in founding the BO, but he left all of his considerable stock in the railroad to found the Johns Hopkins University and Johns Hopkins Hospital. So his name can truly be remembered with gratitude at both Hopkins and the port. And I'm proud to be associated with, both, with each. With a seat on the Hopkins board and, and, and at Ports America Chesapeake, I have a pretty good vantage point at two of the greatest drivers of growth and success here in Baltimore. Hopkins prepares every new generation for opportunities. This port creates opportunities all across our city and state every day. It's a formidable combination and it belongs to a much larger picture. I've been earning a living for many years in finding upside potential. And there is no end to the upside potential for our city and our state. And I feel so proud and so lucky to be a part of it. Not by coincidence, Baltimore's upswing ran strong during the two terms of Mayor Martin O'Malley. That solid record won him a promotion and now he's serving his seventh year in our state's highest office and clearly headed to greater things. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you my good friend, the governor of this great state of Maryland, where we are also privileged to work and call home the Honorable Malcolm O'Malley. Martin O'Malley. Thank you, Malcolm. <laughs> Chris, thank you very, very much. Uh, Chris, uh, for your vision, for your partnership, for your leadership. I remarked to Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake when you were recounting the story as we were walking down through the mud here that I asked you if you really had the money. I said to the mayor, I guess it was a little late to be asking that question. But I want to thank the hardest working and the best, uh, the best uh, workers uh, that you'll find anywhere in America, the, uh, the charming, the good looking men and women of the ILA. Thank you all for what you've done to make our port successful. And Horace Alston, for your leadership, and I know uh, uh, Brian McHale's here from the Maryland House of Delegates, who's always reminding us how important the port is for jobs and opportunity in our state and in our city. And also uh, Richie Hughes, who can't be here today, but without whose partnership, this wouldn't have happened either. And Helen Bentley, you, proud day for the port that bears your name. By golly, your mother knew what she was doing, naming you after the port where you would one day work, didn't she? <laughs> Uh, and I also want to thank, we have a trifecta here, Daryl Mobley, thank you for your uh, great leadership, and uh, also Beverly Swaim Staley, and also John Picari. Uh, we won't tell the new secretary that you slipped out. He's, John said, I'll be right back, and indeed he will. Uh, Ted Vanatoulis and Peter Richkus and all of the commissioners of the Port of Baltimore. This was the largest public-private partnership of its time when it was concluded in 2009. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot going on in our economy, as you might recall in those times. But thanks to Chris Lee, thanks to uh, the hard work of so very many people, uh, and thanks uh, Matt Gallagher, who is here today, who has been my chief of staff uh, through uh, many years in, this, in the state of Maryland. And we also served together in the city of Baltimore. Whatever, whatever positive progress we've been able to make through these difficult times, and there has been much, has been due in large part to the really talented people that God has sent to my aid over these years of public service. And, and none of them more outstanding and more capable than Matt Gallagher. So Matt, thank you, my friend, for making this day possible. And Mayor, thank you. I, I was always frustrated when, and they talked about the, the promotion. I didn't really consider the move to governor as a promotion. I love my days serving here in the city of Baltimore, but one of the things that often rubbed me wrong was the fact that Baltimore, just through tradition and history, has to maintain all of her own road surface, including the roads that carry re really heavy equipment in and out of this port, in and out of this job generator for the entire region. So I, I hope to be able to do a little better on that, Mayor. Uh, you get what you pay for, and the people of our state, through the wisdom of their legislature, has decided that uh, we, we still have the ability to invest in better infrastructure, and we look to uh, strike more equitable ways for all of us to share that, uh, 
uh, as we move forward. I do believe that the state has a greater role that we should play on the egress and the ingress uh, on these roads and highways. Another you know, re most remarkable thing to me about this program thus far is that anybody would like an Leif dorm show to a diplomat. <laughs> Any diplomat, <laughs> let alone Henry Kissinger. Uh, although there is a, a saying that a Brian will know of Irish diplomacy, which is the ability to tell another man to go to hell and have him look forward to the trip. Um, uh, uh, Captain Quo, thank you for being here, sir. Uh, this day is really all about jobs, it's a, and it's about progress. And progress is a choice. Job creation is a choice. Whether we win in competition with Norfolk and other points or whether we lose, uh, that's a choice. And in Baltimore and in Maryland, since 1814, and we've been doing Homeland Security since 1814, uh, Baltimore's always chosen to win. We've taken the actions necessary in order to create jobs and expand opportunity. And uh, 5,700 jobs is what this investment is going to create, not only in the construction, but also in the ongoing operations. Maryland as a state, when it comes to job creation, is a net winner in trade, a net winner in trade. And that's why we make this investment. That's why we crow about the fact that these men and women smoke the competition, 37 lifts an hour, and that also makes our port more competitive. Like we had the best year, I think, on record last year in the port of Baltimore. More cars, farm machinery, and construction equipment came through the port of Baltimore than any other port in our country, thanks to these men and women. And more imported sugar, aluminum, and forest products arrived here than any other port. And out of the 360 ports across the country, uh, we were number two in terms of the amount of coal and uh, iron ore that came through our port. Uh, these rankings are important for one reason and one reason only, and that is jobs. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Why do we make this investment? Why do we invest in our infrastructure? Why do we craft public-private partnerships? One reason, one reason only, and that is jobs. Without jobs, there is no progress for our people. And there are more jobs to be created if we continue to make not only the tough and difficult cuts in government, but also the smart and the right strategic investments and strategic partnerships. And that's what this day really is all about. Uh, the future's bright, and it's bright today. Uh, because of the uh, foresight that we've been able to uh, 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 share as a people and the ability to make consensus, to forge a consensus and to agree that nobody else is going to make these investments for us. These are things that we have to do together as Marylanders, as Baltimoreans, as Americans. And I cannot thank you enough, Chris. Uh, really, this uh, public-private partnership shows us that the same uh, spirit and belief in tomorrow that was demonstrated here in the defense of the port can also be brought to life in our own day in promotion of the port and the creation of more jobs and more opportunity. So uh, we are committed to seeing this vision through and uh, it, it is really all about partnerships. Partnership for jobs, partnership for job creation, the CSX terminal, Mayor, that thanks to your leadership we are able to lure into the city uh, the more we can create jobs and build upon the city's strength, the better for the entire region. So uh, with that, let me uh, uh, simply wrap up here uh, by um, uh, I have a little gratitude, a uh, little gift of gratitude that I'd like to present to Chris Lee. So uh, Chris, if you'd come on up here. The uh, entrepreneurial people of Baltimore, seeing that their uh, national government had a very, very small Navy, decided that we would be entrepreneurial in our approach to the high seas. And so these clipper ships uh, sailed out of our port and uh, were able to uh, tie up and tie down a lot of British shipping and British traffic. It was innovation, it was security, and it was all out of Baltimore. And so in light of that, uh, uh, well, I have a little gift I'd like to present uh, these clippers um, uh, won our freedom in 1812, so it's appropriate that I wanted to give one of these to you, Chris. I assume it's the thing, Jim, under the big box with the blue tarp on it, okay? <laughs> All right, so here we go. Is there a three, two, one for this, or Chris? 
Turn it back over to you. I, um, I'm turning I it back a, over to you. I collect clipper. I collect ship models, and I had a Baltimore clipper in my collection, which I gave to Captain Kuo's boss for his incredible museum in uh, in Taiwan. Well, I was very happy to do it. I've always regretted not having a Baltimore clipper. So hey, thank you, you very much. For hey, thank you. <laughs> you. We won't do the math and figure out how much each of those sales cost you. <laughs> uh, Look, let me, uh, like any good ship, you know, these hardworking cranes have names of their own. And so uh, we also have uh, one other special presentation. Uh, this guy has been uh, doing an outstanding, lead, as, a, outstanding job as the leader of our port. Uh, he has uh, he worked with John Picari in the Glendenning administration. And like all Glendenning appointees, they were far more effective in their second tour of duty. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. No, I'd like to uh, call up J Jim White. Jim, we have decided to name a new crane after you. So Jim White, come on down. Oh, they didn't walk me through. This one? This one. Jim's going to have a couple words shortly. Let me also say thank you to our congressional delegation who makes sure that that channel gets dredged with us, and they're all terrific. Uh, uh, ben Cardin, Dutch Ruppersberger, uh, John Sarbanes, Elijah Cummings, and uh, uh, Steny Hoyer, all of our congressional people are great. Uh, but there is one woman, Barbara A. Mikulski. You know what the A stands for? Stands for always about the port. And she's also the chair of appropriations which is also terrific, and uh, Barbara worked so very hard for us, and we, I didn't want to let this time pass without thanking her uh, for this milestone. And now, back to Chris. Thank you, Governor. When we got the naming rights to these cranes, which only took three months and probably a quarter of Emma McCann's hair with, uh, with see Jim, you thought you were giving up something to us. You got it back. Um, we decided that three would be named after people who are truly special to the Port of Baltimore. Jim, uh, Jim Cumming is the first one. And one would be something truly special to me. Now, by the way, Helen, even though you're the most special person to this port, and you're a very special person to me, you can't have one of the white cranes. You got a blue one, you got the whole port, so. <laughs> you're a Republican, of course you want everything. <laughs> so. Of the, of the three crane dedications for the port, we're going to name two today, and we're going to save the third for the future. G um, Governor O'Malley's dedicated one. Jim White is going to dedicate one uh, to a person who's very special to all of us uh, in the Baltimore port community, and um, I'm dedicating the other. Susan, do you want to come up here? I hope I can get through this without getting emotional, but I will try. When I married my wife, Susan, I didn't have the money for a fancy engagement or a wedding ring. Our honeymoon was a three-day road trip to Martha's Vineyard and a week painting our house. Susan took a lot of my promises on faith, just like the governor did a couple of years ago, though I was thin and good looking then. <laughs> now, when I was unemployed in 1998 and I had the idea to start an infrastructure firm from scratch, everyone except for Susan and my best friend Wayne Berman, who's with me today, thought I was crazy. They all told me, go back to your old firm, Lehman Brothers. It's a safe and secure job. <laughs> so much for conventional wisdom. By the way, I first met Susan in 1982, and that minute I decided to marry her. She wasn't very smitten with me, and it took an additional seven years to tie the knot. Now, 24 years later, I can finally make it up to my extraordinary wife. Susan, I may have had to skimp on the engagement ring, but now I can give you a 400-foot 
super post Panamax shipping crane. What other husband in America can do the same? Susan, from this day forward, you will always be an incredible presence in Baltimore, this great city we're all privileged to call home. Surely you'll learn that you'll be here, not just with Jim White, but another extraordinary person, all under the watchful eye of Helen, whose port it will always be. Susan and I are passionate about education in Baltimore, and she's the real advocate, working with me at Hopkins, Gilman, and Kip. Now, on the subject of Kip, which is a school that leads students from disadvantaged economic backgrounds to attend and succeed at four-year colleges and beyond, Susan and I want to thank Governor O'Malley for stepping up at a critical juncture to ensure the continued success of this amazing program in Baltimore. So, Susan, it is my great privilege to dedicate this crane to you. Thank you for all you've done for me, and especially giving me two outstanding sons and an extraordinary life. I want to close with the excellent advice I took from Rodgers and Hammerstein in the Broadway musical South Pacific. Some enchanted evening, when you find your true love, when you hear, when you hear her call you across a crowded room, then fly to her side and make her your own, or all through your life you may dream all alone. Once you have found her, never let her go. Thank you. Just the Good morning. Um, I'd also like to uh, thank Governor O'Malley for his uh, leadership and direction uh, in getting through the uh, public-private partnership, and uh, Chris Lee uh, for all the time he dedicated uh, to getting this project off the ground uh, and completed. This is a great day for the Port of Baltimore. If you look behind us, four new container cranes, 50-foot uh, berth, which we didn't have before, puts us in the game uh, two years earlier than we anticipated, uh, and Ports America really stepped to the plate in uh, accelerating the project so that we're ready today. Uh, the, um, one of the cranes uh, is, was dedicated to Lorenzo de Casa Grande back uh, last summer, and uh, we have a uh, plaque uh, for him. Uh, he was a driving force uh, in this port for many, many years gave us uh, a lot of uh, our relentlessness in going after cargoes and creating uh, additional jobs and economic benefit for the state. So, Maro uh, Dalbo, if you could step up here. This is, this is the plaque that will be placed on the crane uh, in memory of Captain Lorenzo de Casa Grande. It was dedicated on July 22, 2010, named in, in honor of Captain Lorenzo de Casa Grande for his significant contributions to the Port of Baltimore over two decades and his tirelessness service to the Port of Baltimore community. I think that concludes uh, the, the presentations. Thanks, everyone, for coming. And just a reminder, uh, there's a lunch in. Everyone's invited at Bo Brooks, uh, which is at 2780 Lighthouse Point uh, here in Baltimore. There's shuttles out in the lot, I guess, to take us out. So thanks again to everyone, and uh, have a great day.